let's inspect this limit. The limit as x approaches 0 of the sine of 1 over x. And we're going to do it in, in a couple different ways, but for now let's use, try and use a table. And the key to, to, to understanding this limit is picking the right values when we're using a table. So let's do 2 over pi, 2 over 3 pi, 2 over 5 pi, and I think maybe if you're, if you're looking at the function, it, you'll see why it makes sense to pick these values the way I have. Okay, and then let's do the same for negative values. 2 over pi, negative 2 over 3 pi, negative 2 over 5 pi, negative 2 over 7 pi, negative 2 over over 9 pi. Okay, so here are our x values. What are our f of x values? Well, let's just do the first positive value we pick. Well, actually, first of all, let's make sure that, that this is really is approaching 0. And it, it shouldn't be too hard to convince yourself that, that this is approaching 0 because you can see that the denominators are getting bigger. And in a fraction, if the denominator is getting bigger, the fraction is getting smaller. Or in other words, it's approaching 0. Right? If we kept ju if we just added 2 over 11 pi, 13 pi, 15 pi, just keep going, 100 and million and 1 pi, so on and so forth, then uh, we would be getting closer and closer and closer to 0. Okay, let's see what happens. So let's just do the sine of 1 over 2 over pi. Well, we have 1 over this thing, so we actually, we're just going to take the reciprocal. This is equal to the sine of pi over 2. And the sine of pi over 2, well, the pi over 2, remember, is 90 degrees. I don't know if you're comfortable in radians yet, but you should get comfortable in radians. And th that is just equal to 1. So the value down here is equal to 1. Now, I, I want to do just a very, very short trig review. You probably know the sine function as this is equal to the opposite side over the hypotenuse. Well, here in, in a unit circle, meaning the radius is 1, then the hypotenuse is always 1, which means you just have the sine in the unit circle. The sine will just be equal to the opposite side. And we can generalize that to actually just say not the opposite side, but the height of the point. So this is equal to the height. So this is kind of the unit circle definition, where the height of this point is equal to the sine function. So when we're up here, when we're up at pi over 2, well then, the height at pi over 2 is just the full length of the radius, and the radius is 1. So the height is 1, and, and sine is height, so, so sine is 1. Okay. So that's enough for a trig review. Let's continue with what we were talking about. Well, if we, if we continue doing this, this process, we'll get 2 over 3 pi. That's just going to be the sine of 3 pi over 2, which is down at 270. So that's negative 1. 5 pi over 2, well, that's back up to positive 1. 2 over 7, uh, sorry, two, 2 over 5 pi, 2 over 7 pi, negative 1, 2 over 9 pi, positive 1. And then the, the negative values, well, they're, they're going to end up being the same. We just move counterclockwise. So 2 over pi starts at negative 1. Or sorry, negative 2 over pi starts at negative 1. Positive 1, negative 1, positive 1, negative 1. Okay. So this function, as x is approaching 0, this is not approaching one particular number. It's oscillating. So this function does not exist because of oscillation oscillation don't don't uh, I would look up the spelling before you if you had to spell that in a spelling bee I'm not sure that that's the appropriate spelling uh, anyways this function doesn't exist because the value of the sine function just oscillates between 1 negative 1 1 negative 1 1 negative 1 it just keeps going back and forth 
So make sure that you understand that it's not the the reason that this doesn't does not exist is not because it's different from the left and the right. I know that's what it looks like, but that's not the reason this does not exist. The reason it does not exist is because it oscillates between one and negative one, one and negative one, no matter which direction you're coming from. Okay. Let's take a look at this in just one other quick way. We have the sine of 1 over x, and we're taking the limit as x approaches 0. So let's take a look at, at just the limit as x approaches 0 of 1 over x. So, so 1 over x looks like this and like this. So when x is approaching 0, from positive numbers at least, 1 over x is growing without bound. This is 1 over x. It's just getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. So now we're taking, what ends up happening is we're taking the, the sine of an angle, 1 over x, that's approaching infinity. Or in other words, it just the, the angle just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. So here would be you know when when the angle is maybe 30 degrees but this angle is just gonna keep getting bigger which means it's just gonna spin around this circle and then just keep going and going and going so let me show you a demonstration of that here's maybe when the the angle is 30 like I said it's gonna grow till 90 that's when we get uh, the sine is equal to 1 it's gonna grow till 270 that's when or or 3 pi over 2, that's when the sine is negative 1, and then we're going to get back to where we started. And then we're just going to go around again, right? If this angle is getting bigger, it just keeps going around. We'll get to 720. You know the, you know all the, the full circle angles uh, because of skateboarding and snowboarding. 720, we go around, we get to 1080. If we go around again, we, we'll get to uh, 1440. Um, and so you, you can see that this will just keep going. The angle is getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And, and when that happens, it just basically, it just spins around the circle, the angle, as it gets bigger and bigger. And so as that's happening, the sine function is giving us the heights of all these points. And the highest it will get is to 1, and then it will just go back down to negative 1. And then it will go back up to 1. So that's what, I'm, that's what I mean when I say that this this limit, the sine function, is just oscillating between 1 and negative 1. And you can see, it's, it's not too hard to see that the same thing happens with negative numbers. As we get negatively infinite, it just means we're spinning in the opposite direction. Okay, see you in the next video.